Hello? Uh, you may have noticed that everything right now is in green. And that is because today we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite pile of televisions, TTT. But what is TTT? Where did she come from? Who is she? What does her name actually mean? Why won't she stop talking? Uh, I believe all of these questions have answers, and that these answers are going to be found in her background, and in her profile, and in her voice lines, that sort of thing. So in this video, we're going to be going over all of that. It's going to be a deep dive into TTT, so let's go ahead and get started. But, before we get started in earnest, I did just want to do a bit of a lightning round that listed some of her more surface level references, and stuff that just doesn't really have as much weight beyond just being like a throwaway line. Um, but I think they're pretty neat, so I wanted to include them. TTT's uh, first encounter line is a reference to the ring. Or maybe it's to the grudge. I honestly couldn't tell you I'm really bad with horror, and I haven't seen either movie. I have no intention of seeing either movie, so as far as I'm concerned, these are the same thing. Uh, her To the Future line is a reference to Schrodinger's famous experiment, where he shoves a cat in a box and kills it. Uh, as a fun aside, this was actually initially, you know, originally a thought experiment that was supposed to critique this idea that something can exist within two states at a, any given point in time. Um, and then later on it was just sort of adopted as a, you know, foundation for quantum mechanics. Which I think is weird. It's fine. Uh, her Morning Bond line is a reference to Sprinkle Sprinkles, which are actually a real cereal brand that actually existed. Um, they were introduced in the mid-90s by General Mills, and by 1998 they were out of production. And finally, her Clothing and Torso line is likely a reference to those aerobic programs that you'd see on TV in the like, late 80s, early 90s sort of deal. Um, I'm sure unsure if it's referring to like any particular person, but that's the general vibe I'm getting from that. And that's pretty much it for the lightning round. So, first of all, what exactly is TTT? From a cursory overview of her design, it's, it's fairly simple, right? She is what appears to be a teenage girl who is presented across an array of four old-fashioned, or in the case of this time period, you know, current era televisions. Um... But that doesn't really answer the question of what she is, right? Is she a ghost in the machine? Is she a spirit that, you know, tra uh, travels over the airwaves? Is she like a poltergeist that is haunting a set of televisions, like in that one movie that I also haven't seen? Um, her second story does kind of give this impression, right? This story basically just tells the story of a girl who is on a test of courage. Um, she goes into the school's... A multimedia room and when she does a voice speaks out to her and she finds that someone is talking to her from the computer um she leaves in a fright and the incident was referred to as the ghost in the multimedia classroom so i mean right off the bat ghost right so the assumption here is a ghost however i do think that that is a bit of a red herring uh it's taken from an outsider's limited point of view and looking at her nightline specifically, it seems that she is actually kind of afraid of supernatural phenomena, or at least hell specifically. Delving a bit deeper into her information, it kind of becomes clear that TTT is more of a product of artifice than any sort of like natural or even supernatural manifestation. Her exhibition details state that she was born in the 1990s, and was exhibited all over the world. Uh, in her character introduction infographic from Blue Pock's official Twitter account, her date of birth is further narrowed down to March 12th. As it turns out, March 12th, 1989 is widely regarded as the original conception of the internet as we know it today. Uh, this was a date that the original proposal for a World Wide Web was introduced by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, an English computer scientist. Now, this, along with her medium being Hyperlink, her first story describing the World Wide Web, and her skills invoking various internet-adjacent themes, poses her first potential origin. 
and that would be that TTT is a personification of the internet as a whole given form and thought. Uh, on top of that, the name TTT could actually just be a reference to another familiar three-letter string, which would be WWW. As for why she's a stack of televisions when she's specifically supposed to be like invoking the internet, um, my guess is just that TVs were more visually appealing than like a stack of CPU towers. Or, you know, those old 90s monitors aren't exactly practical or easy to stack, so by process of elimination, it's gotta be TVs. That's my guess. It could be something else. Um, yeah. It's, it's a fairly straightforward interpretation, but I don't think it necessarily stops there. Honestly, I think that it's actually a little bit too broad and too simple. Um, and I think that if she's still got a few secrets to find if we just dig a bit deeper. And this brings us to the next point, which is secrets. Uh, a lot of TTT's voice lines, as well as her story one, really allude to this idea of um, various sorts of secrets. And while this could be a jab at teenagers' propensity for gossip, TTT does seem oddly insistent about, you know, uncovering these. Um, it's almost as if she has some sort of, you know, ulterior motive. Almost as if she's watching, you know, waiting, spying, even. Uh, you know, back in the 90s, there were actually people who thought that the government was spying on you through your television set. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are people who think that today, right? But, I mean, we've got smart TVs today, and those actually connect to the internet, so... I'm just saying, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Regardless, is TTT a government spy? You know, is she a... Maybe a hacker with malintent? Is she the Judas to her Jesus? Are we going to be stabbed in the back? Are we going to be betrayed at some point? Probably not, right? Probably not. Uh, it, it does feel like a bit too sinister to have as a background for her. Um, although her insight art to art doesn't really do her any favors. I don't know what's going on with those eyes. Uh, there is something unsettling in there. Regardless, uh... Having her be a reference to some shady intelligence unit doesn't really mesh too well with what we know of her so far and what's in the rest of her descriptions. So, between, you know, being the internet personified and being anonymous but cute, both theories both, like, lack enough specificity for me to confidently say, you know, this is what TTT is. However, there is one final theory that I think covers all of this and also has a direct connection to what I think TTT is actually an acronym for. TTT, right? The Turing Test. Now, I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, I wager not because why would you, right? I'm a computer science major and I had to look it up, though that probably says more about me than anything else. Regardless, uh, the Turing test was a concept for an experiment laid out by mathematician Alan Turing in the 1950s. Uh, also known as the imitation game, the Turing test was a proposed method to determine whether machines could think. Now I stress think here because thinking is a pretty abstract and complex thing to like determine, right? Now, to be clear, I am not actually claiming that TTT is a direct invocation of Alan Turing himself. The man was born in the 1910s. He, he didn't die only to be resummoned as a chatty high school girl stuck in a bunch of televisions because that would just be ridiculous, right? Instead, I think TTT is more likely to be invoking the entirety of Turing's work and just his life in general. Her existence as a digital life form, as well as her heavy reference to computational systems, is a fairly straightforward. Fuck me. Her existence as a you know digital life form and her heavy reference to computational systems is a fairly straightforward connection. Uh, Turing was very significant in the fields of you know computation and computer science. Uh, to this day, we have several like concepts that bear his name you've got like the turing test you got a turing machine you've got the turing proof um so that would be the connection to ttt there uh, in terms of her uh obsession with secrets this could be a reference to how turing played a very instrumental role in actually unraveling the 
Enigma ciphering system that the Axis powers had been using in World War II. He basically helped to, you know, take enemy secrets and turn it into hot gossip for the boys back home. Um, as for TTT herself, she is exactly what her name states, and that is the ultimate culmination of what the Turing test sought to examine, which is a machine with the capability for thought. But what exactly was this test? Right, so the Turing test, or at least the original iteration of the Turing test, would consist of three conversational partners, an evaluator, and two interviewees who would be restricted to a text-only channel of communication. The evaluator would know that one of their partners was a machine, though they wouldn't actually know which one of them, right? Uh, they would just ask a bunch of questions, and by the end they would attempt to determine who was the machine. If they couldn't, and the responses were deemed you know, sufficiently human-like, uh, that would mean that the machine had passed the Turing test. If you've ever seen the old Blade Runner movie starring Han Solo, the Turing test is really similar to this method that they use to differentiate uh, replicants from humans. I imagine the new Blade Runner movie starring Ken also makes use of this test, but I haven't actually seen it so I can't speak to that. Now, while there were some criticisms of Turing's test, uh, primarily ones that said that sounding human wasn't necessarily an indication of thought. Um, this isn't quite as important. The base theory is the important part since this is kind of what I think they're using as a basis for TTT's character. Now, in this story point, Pandora actually recognizes TTT as human-like. Um, even afterwards, she likens her more to a, a ghost rather than something uh, artificial, right? She is recognizing her as something distinctly human adjacent as opposed to like an artificial intelligence. Uh, beyond that, just looking at TTT's voice lines, we see that there's very little about her that can be deemed as, you know, strictly mechanical or robotic. Right, she's incredibly chatty, she displays a wide range of emotions from, you know, worry, to fear, to frustration, to emotional blackmail. Uh, in terms of the Turing test, she passes with flying colors. So up until this point, I was a little on the fence with the whole Turing idea. Things did kind of fall into place and match up, but I also felt that I was stretching some ideas to make them fit where I wanted to. Um, but while I was doing a bit of research and poking around in her bio, I noticed one little thing that kind of dispelled those doubts a little bit. It's pretty innocuous, right? It's just a small detail. Uh, we see it in her Insight 2 art and in her Udemo form, and for those unaware, the Udemo form is just what Reverse 1999 calls the Arcanist in their suitcase form. And that would be this guy right here. Now, what's he doing there? Why is he there? TTT never actually mentions any particular affinity towards lizards or just animals in general. Nothing about her character invokes reptiles in particular. And for all intents and purposes, she's a pretty normal teenager, albeit, you know, stuck in the television. So why the lizard, right? The fact that it's here seems to be completely random, uh, seemingly for no real reason, right? seemingly being the operative word here. Dear viewers, I present the chemical basis of morphogenesis. Now that's a lot of words, I'm not reading it because frankly I don't understand it, and I started dozing off after trying. Um, thankfully, there are people who are smarter than me that have actually read it, and they have also, you know, summarized it and dumbed it down for people who are less smart than themselves, like me. You know, God bless Wikipedia. Uh, so Turing wrote this article in the summer of 1952, and in the broadest, most general terms, it's basically explaining how patterns in nature, like spirals or spots or stripes kind of arise, right? Um, and these patterns have come to be known as Turing patterns, and they result as a you know, consequence of what is now called Turing instability. The man is just, you know, his name's on a lot of stuff. Now, I won't pretend to fully understand it, but the general gist is that creature patterns 
are a result of various chemical reactions within the body and, you know, the timing of those reactions, that sort of thing. Um, and Turing's article proposed that these patterns could actually be predicted with some level of certainty. This is exactly what scientists from the University of Geneva, Switzerland were able to do fairly recently. Using Cellular Automata, which is a computer system that was created specifically to simulate the growth of cells, they were able to model the growth process of the color switching cells of the oscillating lizard. And they found that the simulation's final results closely resemble the patterns that we see in real life uh, lizards. And it's basically predicting pattern formation, which was what Turing had proposed as a possibility back in 1952. And while TTT's Udemo form looks more like a chameleon than anything else, the little lizard in her Insight 2 art does hold a somewhat of a, of a resemblance to it, uh, the oscillated lizard. Now, obviously this is a bit of a more recent breakthrough, right? This was in 2022, I believe. Um, though I believe the little lizard in TTT's art is more a small nod to just the overall theory that uh, Turing had kind of proposed as opposed to you know that one study in particular now maybe this is a bit of a reach but i mean each character's udemo is typically significant to that character themselves right and i really couldn't explain why ttt's would be a lizard of all things i mean i would have expected something like a radio or a i don't know a smaller television set or you know something electronic but instead we get a lizard and that just seemed to fit the best. Uh, I, I couldn't really find any other through lines between, you know, reptiles and computer systems. But with that, we come to the end of TTT's analysis. Now, whether my evaluation turns out to be, you know, accurate or not, uh, regardless, I think it's really neat how the game sort of hides these little references and characters, um, even if they're, you know, lower rarity units, right? Uh, all the detail isn't necessarily going to the really expensive guys, which is nice. Um, but yeah, that's it for TTT. Uh, I haven't really decided who I want to do next. I want to be honest with you, it's hard to do this. Like, it took me forever to find something about TTT that was actually relevant. I was, I was looking for any possible reference to what this might stand for. I'm not even sure how I landed on Turing, like in the end. I just got there at some point and that must have been a miracle or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's fun to poke around in these characters, you know, bios and try to puzzle out what they actually are a reference to. It's also pretty difficult just because I'm not very smart and not very good at research. Um, regardless, that's the video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, you know, do the YouTube thing. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.